Hi, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching the Council in Brief. We're here with a complete wrap of all the news of the Montgomery County Council for this third week in October. We begin this week with an update on the Universal Preschool Program. The goal of the plan is to provide county four-year-olds from all walks of life with access to preschool services. Our challenge continues to be the scale. You know, it continues to be the fact that we don't have enough slots for all the children that need it. Um, at the state level, of course, there is this mandate, but we're still trying to figure out what's going to happen with resources. Uh, and we're also waiting to hear about the federal um, sort of response, the race to the top dollars that Montgomery County did not compete for, did not have any components, any requirements for preschool. But there is something coming that we hope uh, we can take a look at. All the studies show that when you have students in high quality uh, early care, uh, pre-K settings, that they definitely are ready to learn. They come into kindergarten ready, and that, that means savings throughout their education. So it is the right thing to do. Getting your family protected from the flu should be easier this year. The county is offering free vaccinations for those who sign up for an appointment. This year's flu vaccine includes protection against the H1N1 virus as well as the regular strains of influenza, so you will only need one vaccine. For those over the age of 18, shots will be provided. Children who are two years old and up will get the flu mist or nasal vaccine. Seasonal flu campaign got underway with the beginning of October. Uh, it's readily available in the, the private pharmacies and the public sector will be sponsoring flu clinics uh, during this month through to, the, to December. So now is the time. We recommend anyone who is over six months of age to get a flu shot this year. A proposal to designate Bethesda's Greenwich Forest neighborhood as a historic district is leaving that community sharply divided. 71 homes are proposed to fall within the historic district. The Planning Board, Historic Preservation Commission, and the County Executive are all recommending the designation. The community was developed by famed developer Morris Kafritz in the 1920s through the 1940s. The neighborhood is known for its natural landscaping, mature trees, and Tudor Revival and Colonial Revival architecture. Designation as a historic district would mean homeowners would have to get approval for any changes to their property. We visited with some residents from Greenwich Forest and found out what they had to say on the matter. I mean, do you think people should be allowed to improve on their homes if they want to? Yes, I do. And uh, I think it would hurt values in the neighborhood because, you know, a lot of these houses, people do buy them to fix them up quite a bit, add on to them uh, substantially. And if uh, if they're not able to do that, then the values aren't going to be there. The one thing that, that I think is a deterrent from becoming a historic preservation is that there are restrictions such as fence building. And my understanding is that folks who have wanted to build a fence to, in fact, protect children from a, a busier road at the end of our neighborhood haven't been able to do so. Well, I think I'm in favor of it, uh, to maintain the ambiance of the neighborhood, the, the strolling abilities, you know, it's a nice place to walk, it's a nice place to look and, you know, see the houses. I think it's a good idea because I've seen what happens when we don't have uh, restrictions against uh, doing whatever property owners think they can do when they buy a piece of land. Neighbors who live near the at-grade railroad crossing at Forest Glen Road in Silver Spring may soon get some relief from the whistles of those passing trains. The designation of this quiet zone is scheduled to go into effect November 1st and it's the result of a two-year campaign by Councilmember Valerie Irvin. All this will do is create a situation where the conductor will not blow the horn during uh, certain designated uh, spots along the route. But um, if the, the, the conductor sees something that is hazardous, he can, you know, it's at his discretion to blow the horn. But right now this will help the neighbors who have lived there for many years and who've complained about the loud uh, train noises. I personally like to hear the trains, but they're from quite a distance away from my house. But so people are very excited about this. Well, that does it for this edition of the Council in Brief. We'll be back again next week with all the Council's news. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching.